In the last video, we made a start on the base assembly here. And in this video, we're going to finish the base off by installing the leg vise. The screw that we're going to be using for the leg assembly is made by Veritas, and it's actually sold as a tail vise. Now, here in Australia, they cost about $40, $41. Uh, and from what I can see online, they cost about the same over in the States and, well, internationally. So now, I have put together a little bit of a list of uh, dealers from around the world. So just head over to my website and check the description of this video, and you'll be able to find a dealer that will at least be able to send one to you. So to install this vise, we need two things. We need a hole in the leg that allows the screw to pass through, and we also need a through mortise on the lower part of the leg that will allow the long parallel guide to pass through. Cutting those two things is pretty simple, and as we have already covered the methods needed in earlier videos, I'm only going to skim through the details. Both the hole and the mortise are centered on the leg, so I begin by marking the center line along the entire face from there, taking the locations directly from the plans, I mark the locations of the 35mm hole and the through mortise. Now, in the plans, the mortise is shown as being 55mm long and flush with the lower rail, but I decided that 70mm long and about 5mm up from the rail looked a little bit more suitable. Once that was all marked, I took the leg assembly apart and cut the 35mm hole using my drill press. But like always, if you don't have a drill press on hand, a normal drill will work just fine. With the hole cut, I took the leg back over to my bench and using my plunge base router and my longest straight cutting bit, I started to cut the mortars. Now, as the legs of this bench are so thick, you're not going to be able to cut this mortise all in one go or from the same side. So we need to plunge in about halfway from one side, flip the workpiece end for end, and then finish cutting the mortars from the other side. Once that was cut, I finished the leg assembly by sending the rails through my drum sander and then gluing them all up. So with the leg assemblies in clamps, let's actually get a start on this vice chop. Now the plans call for material which is 200 millimeters wide by 660 millimeters long. Now uh, that's a fairly small piece of timber that we need at that width and most salvage yards I go to have a bin which is full of offcuts. And uh, that's exactly where this piece came from. So on top of the chop, we also need a little bit of material for the uh, parallel guide which is at the bottom of the chop. So I went ahead and I actually uh, have fitted this to the mortars, and it's not like a fitting a mortise and tenon joint, you want it to be uh, loose and freely moving. So the way I did that was I took it over to my thicknesser and I sent it through several times until it was fitting in the mortise with a, with a little bit of wiggle room. And then once it was fitting there, I took it over to my router table and I rounded over the edges so that it would actually fit inside the mortise and slide freely. Looking at the plans, I can see that I need to cut a hole in the chop here that will accept the screw of the vise. On top of that, we also need to figure out a way of securing this parallel guide onto the vice chop itself. And lastly, we also need to shape this uh, chop here so it actually looks good. Now, the first thing that we need to do is mark a center line along the length of the chop. And this is gonna show us where the uh, hole for the screw is gonna be and also where we secure the parallel guide. And then once we actually have the center line marked, we can mark the shape we wanna cut it to and actually cut it out. Now I'm going to use my bandsaw to cut this out, but if you don't have a bandsaw, a jigsaw works just as well. Now there's a lot of ways we can actually secure the parallel guide here onto the vice chop. Now you could go as simple as just doing a butt joint reinforced with two long screws. So you have two screws come through the face of your chop and go into your uh, parallel guide. And that's a perfectly fine option and there's not really anything wrong with doing that. Now, another really good option, and it's the option I suggest you guys use, is using two dowels. So you'll just get your two round dowels and uh, you know glue it in place here. So just let it set up and uh, away you go. That way you don't really need to worry about where you drill the holes in your parallel guide because after all, if you just use your butt joint with screws, there is a risk that you'll uh, hit a screw and, and damage your drill bit. One step up from that is actually making it a mortise and tenon. So your uh, parallel guide would become the tenon and you just cut a mortise into your chop. And that's what I did on my first bench. Uh, works a treat, but I don't necessarily think it's, uh, it's needed, but definitely a very good option. Or of course, if you're lucky enough to have a domino machine, you could just use dominoes. And that's what I'm gonna be doing.
So I went ahead and I also chopped down our parallel guide here to be the same length as our vice screw. And now before we actually glue it on, we should also uh, drill the holes through the entire length here, which acts as the depth stop for the parallel mechanism, so the parallel guide. Now the other thing I want to do before we glue the parallel guide on is drill the hole through the chop here for the, the screw. Now we should still have our marking out on the leg like here and that's the centre line of the screw so I'm just going to extend that onto the side face here to make it a little bit easier for me to uh, locate and then with that mark we just have to put our vice drop in position but we do need the parallel guide installed even though it's and then making sure that we've got a nice even gap on our parallel guide. So a gap on the top and the bottom of the mortise. We just mark that on the face of the jaw. So this tick line here, which we just marked, indicates the uh, center of the hole. And we've already got our center line, which we marked on our vice chop. So I'll just use my square to extend that. And right here is where we drill our 35 millimeter hole for the, uh, the screw of the vice. And now we can just glue this in place. So I've taken this out of the clamps. It's been drying for several hours now. And uh, when I install it, you can see that it slides on there just fine. And uh, the alignment of the hole here is perfect for our screw. Now that's pretty much all it is to actually getting this vise installed. Now of course we need to attach the screw uh, to the block and the leg um, and also put some guide wheels on this parallel guide but that is part of the finishing up touches and that's going to be in the next video. So like always if you've enjoyed this video and the entire series so far give me a thumbs up, uh, leave a comment and also subscribe to my channel because this is a weekly woodworking podcast so if you don't want to miss out on my weekly videos make sure you click that subscribe button. Now, now on top of that I'm on Facebook so head over to facebook.com slash Woodshop and give me a like over there and also visit my website which is georgewoodshop.com. Anyway thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.